Good morning, I'm Tammy and welcome to my channel. And today we are starting it's the first day of my watercolor beginner series. And it's going to be five videos in five days where we're talking about brush strokes, we're talking about types of paint, painting techniques, we're talking about color mixing, we're also talking about papers and how to do different um, techniques and texture as well in watercolor. And then finally on our last video, we're going to do two compositions, one with florals and different styles and how to add layers and add details, as well as we're going to do a composition of a landscape. So I'm really excited for you guys to join me. Today we're starting with our brush strokes and our brushes and how to care for them. Let's get started. So first of all, I would love to talk about how to hold your brush. So I have a variety of brushes here that I use a lot. For example, this is a number 16 round brush and it's really great for painting large flowers, for example. So I wanted to talk about how to hold it and there's various ways uh, depending on what you wanna accomplish. I do a lot of loose flowers and so I have some examples over here of some florals that I just did recently. And so I want to hold the brush usually in the middle. Um, here's some other ones I did as well with just some different marks. And if I wet my brush, just so that the bristles aren't so stiff, um, I want to hold it in that middle part of the handle and start painting my flowers. Now, of course, I don't have paint on here. It's just for demonstration. Sometimes I'll actually hold the brush a little bit farther out. So the farther out you hold it, the less control you have. But when we're doing loose florals and things, for example, we don't want a lot of control. We want to get these really loose shapes that are gonna give us this nice billowy look. It's not tight and you know constrained. So if you want to hold your brush this way vertically, sometimes you wanna paint things. Um, I wouldn't usually hold a big brush like that. I would probably hold maybe a smaller brush like that if I'm doing stippling, for example. We'll talk about that later little dots in the center. So just making sure when you wanna do loose painting, hold it very loose. Don't be gripping it so tightly because you're not going to be able to get that nice loose look. If you're trying to do something painstakingly tiny and detailed, then definitely you hold the brush a lot closer to the tip so you have more control, holding it just like a pencil. And that's pretty much how it is. So I want to talk about how to care for your brushes as well. And that's very important because we have these brushes that depending on how much you spend, um, they might last for a very long time. And we want to increase them being able to last for a long time. So typically what we'll do is we'll wash our brushes in just some water, some cold water. And what I like to do is run it over the faucet, you know, and just getting this wet right here. And I kind of like to go like this just to clean off the paint. So I just wanted to demo how I clean my brushes, making sure to get all the paint out. And then maybe once a week or so, I will take that cleaning solution. Don't use regular soap, it's not good for your bristles. And then I will just clean that with some fresh water reshape the brush and then let it sit and dry on paper towel. So once all your brushes are clean and they're still dry, it's very important to dry them flat. I will take a piece of paper towel, for example, and lay them on there so they can dry nicely and they're not making a pool on my table. What you really want to avoid is drying them up like this. For example, grabbing a jar. I have a jar over here. Grabbing a jar and just letting it dry like that, okay? That is the one thing you don't wanna do because water will get into this ferrule right here and it's going to loosen up the glue that's gluing these bristles in place. So once everything is dry, feel free to put them upright and store them in a jar, but not until everything has dried properly. It's very, very important. Also, I have something called a travel case that I like to use um, since we're talking all things brushes. And this is great because I just got it on Amazon because you can extend it out a little bit. It's a little stuck because I had it at the beach and everything kind of, kind of got stuck in there. But there's a wonderful cover. You can stick your brushes in here, put on the cover as long as it's tall enough, and then you can seal it. And if you keep them upright, you are not going to have any issues with your brushes getting ruined. I have purchased travel cases or pouches before where you put them into these little holes in this piece of cloth and then you flip it over to protect the tips and then you roll it up. 
but I found that the tips of the brushes often got squished in that, and that was not ideal for me. All right, so let's talk about the types of brushes and their marks. So I'm gonna open up my sketchbook. I just barely started. Here's a couple tutorials that I've done. And this for me is the fun part because we get to talk about what are the brushes and the marks that they can create. So these are my most favorite brushes. This one is a mop. And then we have a lovely flat wash brush. I have a smaller flat wash brush as well. And I love to use these for landscapes. I really like big painterly brush strokes and this helps to get that uh, look. Then I also have a number 16 round that we talked about. Really good for watercolor florals. Um, this one is also great for florals. It, it's a mop, it holds lots of water. And as far as I know, all these are synthetic brushes. Uh, I did have a few as a gift, so it's hard to know, but I prefer to use that. But if you do use the ones with animal hair, I've been told that they hold a lot more water. But for me, these synthetic brushes work great. So I have a filbert. I do a lot of florals, and this filbert is really helpful for getting the round tip of those flowers. I've got my dagger brush, which has a nice point and then also a thicker uh, body. And so you can do thin and thick strokes a lot easier. And then this one, let's just get it really nice and pointed. A number eight round brush, which is also really good for most of the things you can do, florals and landscapes, animals, whatever you prefer. But having that point is good. So you can do thick and thin strokes. And last but not least, this wonderful liner brush that really helps put everything together when you need tiny details. So we're going to start with this filbert here, dipping into some of the green. And I love this brush a lot. I did not spray down my palette. That is one tip to always spray down so you can reactivate your paint. Of course, we'll be talking about that in one of the next videos. Oh, and I did a little splotch there. That's okay. This is how it happens. I'm a messy painter. I don't apologize for it. I just try to compensate for it sometimes. <laughs> so you can do, this is the brush stroke. If you're just simply pressing down and lifting up and you can see what a great mark is made there. You can go from the side, make really thin strokes. You can just practice here. So for example, some nice lines. This is a really great exercise to just make the lines and see how straight you can go and then press down with the belly and go thicker. And then we're gonna add a lot more pressure and we're gonna go from the, from this thicker part here and I'm gonna see how wide we can go. So we're getting a little bit of a dry brush effect. So we'll just dip in, get some more paint and go all the way. So you can see this brush can do a lot of things. I'm going to even just dip into um, my pink here because I really can't resist making a flower. So I'm just going to take these brush strokes here. We're gonna do some from the side like this, some of them facing different directions, and just flipping my brush around to get different directional strokes here. And you can do the side as well, just some little petals that might be poking up there. And this is just a really simple flower, but you can see how pretty that can be when you start adding in more layers. And I like it because you're getting the rounded tip that you would have for flowers anyway. So now I have our mop brush here. It held so much water as you're about to see. So we'll just start with some blue on our palette here. And this by the way is a Mei Liang paint palette. I think it's around $20 on Amazon. I love it so much because it is really affordable for a student grade. You can see how thick these marks are right here. And you can also go pretty thin. There's a nice point on there. It's um, it's good for a student grade, really good paint. and But it is really affordable if you compare it to um, a professional paint cost. So if you're starting out and want to go past um, craft paints, if you've started with craft paints, which I did, this can be a really great uh, deal for you. All right, pressing down with the whole belly of the brush. And look at how thick of a mark you can make with this brush. It's quite lovely and we can even grab some more blue here and just use it to create maybe like a side facing floral just kind of like that. There's a lot of water on here so I recommend you dabbing on your paper towel and then using and you can use the brush to lift off some of that 
some of that now because it is drier as you dab it. So I recommend dabbing it to not have so much liquid um, on your brush when you're painting. Um, all right, so now we have our flat wash brush and this is so nice. It's a really thick, um, thick brush, but it's going to do a lot of lovely, more angular shapes, I would say, than say your round brush. And sometimes I can appreciate that. Sometimes that's something I want for my landscapes. Really nice angular square moment. And I can go to the side and I can kind of go like this, just do a few little squigglies or whatever. Let's do some squigglies over here. So if we're using very light pressure, we're going to get a really thin line. And as we keep pressing down with the brush, of course our lines are gonna get thicker. Let's do a nice thick one across here. All right, and that is great. If you wanna paint something with some angles, even if you wanna paint square, it's perfect. And you're gonna get a very squared off look with your painting, on your painting. Now, this is a number 16 round brush. I do use it a lot, probably more than any of the other um, larger brushes, more than the mop brush, definitely, because I think it's enough, it holds enough water for what I want to do, and it's nice and large so I can do some really fun marks. I'm just gonna do a little bit here, a little bit thicker, press down more, press more, and right there. And you can see it's not too pointed of a petal, which I like. I don't like it when my petals are really, really um, pointed. I like them to be round, but then again, it just depends on what I'm painting. So you can do pretty thin lines once again, and then pressing down more with the belly of the brush, more pressure, lifting up, and let's really, let's go from the side and just press down as much as we can, and then lift up. Uh, let's go ahead and do, let's do a flower with this one as well. And I'm gonna just do just some little lines like this, everything connecting towards the center, the center point where all the petals are coming together. And I feel like for me, the mop brush tends to give me too much water and I have to end up dabbing it. And so I am not as familiar and not as comfortable because I just don't use it as much. But this number 16 is the one I grab, I go for when I'm wanting those big floral shapes. And of course you can do your landscapes with this as well too. There's no, no worries about that. It's just a preference on what you feel most comfortable with. Okay, so this dagger brush, it's, an, it's a half dagger, is one of my favorites too because you've got the broad side and you've got that thin side of your brush. Let's go for kind of an orangey red color, just really scrubbing in to get that paint. And we'll just make some marks so we can do a few marks here. Get a little thicker, a little thicker. We can angle it this way and get a mark. We can angle it this way. Just do a little bit of whatever with this. And let's go ahead and do our lines. So really thin. I tend to use my daggers and we'll do a little bit more pressure. We're gonna shift it. I like to use my daggers when I'm, when I'm adding the stems to my flowers. And so I'm painting at an angle. So the shape of my line is gonna be very different than if I were to paint just like this. Now pressing all the way, we're gonna run out of paint. I'm gonna grab some more, pressing down all the way and seeing what comes out of that. A little bit of a dry brush there, which is really pretty. All right, we're gonna turn the page because we are going to get to the next part. I'll save this for later. And so the next one, we just have a few brushes left. I have my flat wash brush. This is a very small one. It doesn't even have a number on it. I just purchased it for a few dollars. I love it so much. And I use this most of the time when I'm doing my landscapes, um, painting outdoors, because I do them in a smaller amount, uh, a smaller scale, like a nice little sketchbook. And I just don't need a large brush to do all that. All right, so this one, we're going to do the side of the brush for that little mark, pressing down more, and then with that broad side of the brush, and I'm gonna press really, really, um, really hard on this. Just a little extra there. Let's do some squiggly lines and see what we get from that. What paint was I using? This one, it's a nice, nice, lovely crimson color. 
just a little bit of a wave here. I think I can go a little bit thinner if I just go straight on this. We'll see. And this is, this is something that can be a really good exercise if you are wanting to practice brush control. Um, it can be something that's really helpful for you to work on this like this. And then you can press down and then you can lift off and go thin again, however you feel you'd like to do it. I thought it would be kind of fun to maybe paint a flower with this too, because you know, why not? So we'll just do a little bit of a a floral situation and it's very square <laughs> but you can you can be creative you know you can be creative and paint how you want to paint uh, once this is dry if we wanted we can add a little center to it and really make it look like a flower but for now we're just gonna leave it okay next we have our number eight round brush and I was saying that I use this often for many things that I paint let's go with this color here so I'm just scrubbing wet brush in that paint, they've already been sprayed. They're a little bit liquidy, and let's just mix it on there. Okay, so it has a nice tip to it, and we're just going to paint on this side right here. So I'm just gonna do, actually, I'm gonna do my lines first. So we'll just start with a straight line, and you can get pretty thin here. Talk about a nice pointed round brush, and let's do a little bit more pressure. So I encourage you to try these exercises, especially when you're not sure what to paint. Uh, it's gonna give you more control over what you're painting. And look how much paint I've been able, how much I've been able to do with just that one, one serving of paint. <laughs> I'm going to press down and I'm just gonna do this from the side and we'll just see, I might need to load up some more paint on my brush. We're doing good. Okay, that worked out well. A little bit more paint here. Was it this one? I think so. And we're just gonna do a few marks. Little thin lines, thicker, 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 and thickest. And there you go. All right, and then the last brush I wanted to demo was the liner brush. And like I'm telling you, it's one of my favorites because it can really do all the things, um, all the things in terms of details. So we're gonna do just a few little lines here, just really thin. And then if you press down, you might get thicker and thicker. And that is about as far as it can go. Okay, we'll do a little bit of a squiggly line. Now it is a very small brush, so it tends to run out of paint pretty quickly. You might have to reload faster than um, most of your other brushes. That's just how it is. And that's running out already. Let's see if we can go a little bit thicker. This is such a, yeah, see there you can. Such a tiny brush, but it can do some magical things. Okay. And then if you were to like paint a leaf situation, for example, over here, a blue leaf, you know, cause why not? I mean, you can. And I'm just gonna leave it in the middle, open like that, and then just add in my little brush strokes for a little bit of some veins there for our details. All right, so the last thing I wanna teach you guys are three techniques, dry brushing, lifting color, and dropping in color. So the first one is going to be our dry brush technique and you can use that for textures and watercolor, landscapes especially. I say that because I use it in my landscapes all the time. So I've got my green paint here um, on my brush, on my palette. What I'm gonna do is dab it on the paper towel, and then we are just going to see at what point we can start getting a dry brush effect. As you can see here, it didn't take too long because we dabbed our brush on the paper towel. And so you see that the brush, as it's getting dry, it's starting to skip along, especially if you have some type of texture to your paper. And it would be really beautiful when you're doing the ground, for example, sometimes even the sky if you're doing a landscape. So the second thing that I want to show you is how to lift color. So let's actually take a number eight round brush and you can do this when something is wet as well as when something is dry. So I'm gonna take my purple, it's a lot of liquid there, I'm gonna dab, and I'm just going to create 
a little bit of a flower. So we'll do five petals here and four, and then we'll do the fifth one right there. All right, so if I want to lift some color, I'm going to rinse off my brush, I'm gonna dab it on my paper towel over here so it's damp, and I'm going to just run it along and lift some of that color, see that? We'll try that one more time. And that can be a great way to create a little highlight on something or just a little contrast. If you want to <clears throat> create a highlight on a mountain, for example, where the light is shining on it. And so that's a great trick. Now, what if something is already dry? Can you lift color? Yes, you can. Let me show you how you can do that. It is a little bit more tricky but it's still doable and I'm excited to show you how. So I'm going to paint the same type of flower here, five petals. This is just a really quick, easy little flower for a demo here. All right, so you have your flower situation happening. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry and I will come back and show you what I mean. Okay, so now that it's dry, we're going to take our brush. We're just making sure that it's pretty clean. My water is really dirty, so it's not gonna be the easiest, you know, to, to get it clean, but that's okay. We, we just want a damp brush. We're going to dab it on our paper towel. And then what we're going to do is we're going to scrub. We might have to scrub a little bit longer than we did with the other one. And you're just going to scrub that area and you're going to get some of that color off. Now, now you're going to rinse your brush, <clears throat> dab it, and then you can go ahead and scrub some more, rinse, dab. And what you're doing here is removing that paint that has already dried. And it takes a little bit more time sometimes, but it is still doable and is still something that is a great technique to use. I use it all the time when it does come to my landscape. So just a little bit there. Now, can you remove all the paint? No, but at least you can do a little bit, make a little bit of a highlight. And it's a great technique to add to the skills that you have. And I just wanted to add some middles to these flowers. I just felt like they needed a little pizzazz and I just didn't want to leave them that way. It's just so sad. So just dabbing, stippling, that's something that we'll talk about later on. Now the last technique I want to teach you is where we are going to uh, drop in color. So I will be, I will change my water and I'll be right back. So to do this technique, we're gonna take clean water and we're going to paint the shape of a flower. All right, so we're just gonna do five petal shapes here. Try not to put too much water on your paper where you don't want it to be like this flood or this puddle happening, but just kind of lightly painting it on. And now we're going to take some color concentrated from the actual uh, palette here. There's a little bit of water in there, but for the most part, pretty concentrated and we're just going to drop in some color. Now, depending on the type of paper that you have, you might have some more movement than I'm having here. I'm using a watercolor paper that is not 100% cotton. And so because of that, you might have to actually encourage some of this to move. And this is a wet on wet technique. This is something that is utilized all the time, wet on wet is really fun because it creates really soft edges for your watercolor, whatever you're making. And if you're doing flowers, like I like to do, um, you're gonna find that you're, you're gonna have more of a diffused look when you're done rather than hard edges. So I'm gonna just move this a little bit more, but everything is just kind of blooming and spreading because of the water and because the water and the paint, the water I first put down and then the water um, <clears throat> that is in the paint that I just dropped in. So just creating a fun little look, really soft compared to this especially. And if we look back on the techniques that we used here, we were able to try a lot of different things, just adding in a little bit for your middle of your flower. And at this point, if you want to go ahead and add a little bit of details here, you can. I like to just add a little bit of paint especially in the middle of the flowers. Um, some of that paint is going to spread in crazy ways and that's okay. We just want to create some texture and just a little bit of shadow too. 
So I'm just making these intuitive marks. I'm not thinking too much about it. If you need to move slower, that's of course better. I Sometimes I move too fast and then it's a little bit hard to follow. But for me, what I'm trying to do is just create a little bit of texture and a little bit of depth on these florals. And you know, this one's supposed to be a flower as well. And so we're just adding a little bit here and just creating some marks that will just be kind of fun to look at. And so is this, you know, a realistic floral you know, design? Well, no, but the point is to be able to have fun with your watercolors. I love loose watercolor paintings. They make my heart happy. They're fun to do. It actually might seem like it wouldn't be challenging, but for me, it was quite challenging to learn because I was really used to trying to keep things tight. And, you know, sometimes you, it's a trial and error situation. And we're just gonna do some little blobs here. So you didn't know you were getting a little class today on adding some details, but I just like to leave these guys a little bit more fancy. And this one here too. So you can see how adding these layers are really important to creating depth in your florals. And in one of the last classes for this watercolor series, we're going to learn more of how to take the concepts that we're learning today and create a floral, lands a floral landscape, a landscape and a floral composition as well. So that's something that you can stay tuned for because and look out for, because it's important to practice all the things that we're learning and figure out how all the pieces go together. So I'm just doing a little bit of a hibiscus, just a really loose style and getting that all together there. So that's basically it guys. Well, thank you for joining me for today's video. Tomorrow we're gonna to be talking about paint, painting techniques and types of paint and how to care for your palette. So I'll see you tomorrow. Also, I do teach watercolor on Patreon. The link is in the description of this video if you're interested in checking it out. It is a way to support me as well as to get bonus content, exclusive tutorials, art prints, even live stream with me as well. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.